And because of that, the kingdom of Saul was quite threatened by David. And David began to run for his life. And this running was good. Because that is what trained David on how to, to fight. I believe if it was easy in the palace. David would not have become a mighty man of war. And then as we learned to uh, 1 Samuel 26, we find that David had already ran away from Saul. Hallelujah. Amen. David had already run away from Saul. And he had many men, the fighting men of David. Remember when David began his ministry, the Bible tells us in the book of Chronicles that everybody that was distressed in Israel, them that were in debt, they are the men that followed him. 400 men what we can call quote and quote the useless men of Israel. So as Saul was pursuing David in chapter 26, he found that they fell asleep in the camp of Saul. And it was by the design of God for the Bible says God sent them a very deep sleep. And then David went and uh, he found Saul. And David with his mighty men one very aggressive man in the administration of David was called Abishai. And it is Abishai that wanted to kill Samuel. I mean Saul. But David in his own understanding had known that God will deal with Saul. And there was no need to stretch his hand against the Lord's anointed. Because Saul was anointed in public. Out to the people and to Ab and to Abner the son of Ner, saying that Abner was the chief commander of Saul. Uh -huh. Do you not answer Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who are you calling out to the king? So David said to Abner, Are you not a man? And who is like you in Israel? Why then have you not guarded your lord the king? For one of the people came in to destroy your lord the king. This thing was seventeen. 17. Mm -hmm. Then Saul knew David's voice and said, Is that your voice, my son David? David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. Verse 21. Then Saul said, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will harm you no more, because my life was precious in your eyes this day. Indeed, I have played the fool and erred exceedingly. Mm -hmm. And David answered and said, here is the king's spear. Let one of the young men come over and get it. May the Lord repay every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered you into my hand today, but I will not stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. 25. Then Saul said to David, May you be blessed, my son David. You shall both do great things and also still prevail. 
So David went on his way and Saul returned to his place. Hallelujah. Amen. So from actually from verse 25, we can confirm that Saul confirmed that David was the anointed of the Lord. And he knew that God will use David. And he will prevail. And he will sit on the seat. But immediately after such a great confirmation David did a very great mistake in his life and that mistake cost him a lot of losses and, and that is what we are going to be looking at today and I want you to be very keen because if you have lost many things this year in 2023 the Lord will help you to recover them but there is a divine process when it comes to recovery and that's what I want to teach you the Bible says in chapter 27 of 1 Samuel and the David said in his heart say his heart he just immediately after Saul the arch enemy of David has confirmed that he shall be the king David said in his heart Tell your neighbor the heart of a man is very wicked Desperately wicked David was a man that used to inquire of the Lord But this time around he, con he, he conferred with his heart flesh and blood And he said I shall now perish One day by the hand of Saul there is nothing before uh, there is nothing be better for me that I should speedily escape in the land of the Philistines. See how the Lord had protected David for years. And sometimes he will cause the camp of Saul to make many mistakes in their journey. But after David hearing the assurance of God for him becoming king, he said, Ah, shall surely perish one day in the hand of Saul. Lakini baada ya Daudi kusikia ni uthibitisho huko kutoka kwa Sauli anasema siku moja nitaangamia mikononi mwa Sauli. So in other terms, kwa mambo mengine, David now walks away from where the Lord had kept him. Daudi anaondokea pale ambapo Mungu alikuwa amemweka. It was better for David to stay in Jerusalem. Ilikuwa ni afadhali Daudi kuketi Yerusalem. Because the Lord had fought many battles for David. Maana Mungu alikuwa amevipigana vita vingi kwa ajili ya Daudi. This time he decided. Lakini wakati huo since I am afraid that one day I may fall by the hand of Saul I am going to join the enemies of God the Philistines and I will live within them and you know the problem of living in the camp of Philistines you acquire their strategies even in war at this time David had 600 men they were no longer 400 men Meaning that in the wilderness God was still providing him with additions In chapter 27 he goes to, to the Philistines He went to a place called Gath Those of you who read the Bible know that is the place where Goliath came from but the Bible says Goliath came from Gath And he carried his wife He carried every possession that he had And he went to that land The land of Philistine And he went and began to plead with the enemies of God And he said that to Achish The king of Gath If I find favor and the grace in your eyes then give me a place to live in and I want to tell you you can only get the provision of God he has sent you because Achish knew David was a man of war he said there is no problem I will give you a place called Ziklag say Ziklag I will give you a place called Ziklag Amen Amen Kuliza jirani yako na ye shetani ya mekupatia makao maani kuna hitu aji. 
Na wewe shetani amekupatia makao mahali panaitwa aje. Kariandundu. You, you know when the offer of death or, or Satan looks very good. Wakati ambao ile yani zawadi ya shetani inaonekana mzuri. Kwa mtazamo wa nje. Ziklab was a very good place. Kuangalia kwa nje Ziklab kilionekana mahala pazuri. It was captivating to the eye. Ilikuwa inapendeza macho. And David said now I will live here. Daudi akasema basi nitadumu hapa. The soul will get me no more. Na Sauli hatanipata tena. But one character began to enter the life of David that was very dangerous. Na tabia moja ikaanza kuingia maishani mwa Daudi ambaye haikuwa mzuri. You know this guy was known for war. Mtu huyu alijulikana kwa ajili ya vita. So the the, the, the man became a a crook. Ha watu basi wakafanyika Daudi we are talking about David. Kwa hivyo Daudi akafanyika It is David that became crook because when a leader becomes crook the followers become crook. Yaani Daudi basi akafanyika tu mtu asiyekuwa na maana. You want to know that? Go to a pastor that insults another pastor. All his members have been insulting that pastor. If a leader is a crook the, the followers all of them become crooks. So he become a crook and this is what they will do. Basi hivi ndivyo watakavyofanya. They used to go to a village. Wanaenda katika kijiji. And they kill everyone. Wanaua watu wote. And the Bible says David will never spare a man or a woman. Biblia inasema Daudi hangemwacha mme ama mke. Because he didn't want that report to come to Achish. Maana hakutaka ile habari mjie Achish. So when he has finished all of them he will uh, he will carry spoil he will steal from them. Basi akisha maliza kufanya vile atabeba vyote vilivyokuwa vyao. Na Achish will ask him. Na Achish akimuuliza. Where are you coming from? Umetoka wapi? He will lie to him. Atamdanganya. I've been fighting my brethren in Judah. Nimekuwa nikipigana mandugu zangu kule Yuda. You know when the, when Satan gives you something. Unajua shetani anapokupa kitu. He also gives you the spirit behind that thing. Anakupatia roho ambayo inaambatana na kitu. It is my prayer in 2023. Ni ombi langu katika mwaka 2023. Oh what the offer looks like. Aje haizalishi ile offer inaonekana nzuri vipi? It's not of God. Kama sio ya Mungu. Please learn to say no. Tafadhali kufunza kusema haleluya amen if it is not of god please learn to say no kama si ya mungu jifunza kusema hapana it is better to stand alone and be lonely in a place where you know you are practicing righteousness afadhali kusimama peke yako na uwe peke yako mahali ambapo unajua unafanya utakatifu that story you can read it from uh, you maybe read it from 27 verse 9 you can read 9 and 10 naweza soma kutokea samuel kwanza 27 oh you read it up to 12 so that you don't say i didn't read the bible mhm the word says mm-hmm. whenever david attacked the land He left neither man nor woman alive but took away the sheep the oxen the donkeys the camels and the apparel and returned and came to Achish then Achish will say where have you made a raid today and David will say against the southern area of Judah or against the southern area of the Jeramelites or against the southern area of the Kenites David will save neither man nor woman alive to bring news to God saying lest they should inform on us saying thus David did and thus was his behavior all the time he dwelt in the country of the Philistines so Achish believed David saying he has made his people Israel utterly abhorrent therefore he will be my servant forever hallelujah Amen. david became a crafty man basi daudi akafanyika mtu wa mungu because of living in ziklag kwa ajili ya kuishi ziklag sometimes the company you keep wakati mwingine yani wale watu unaoambatana nao will determine whether you gain or you lose spiritually itaweza kusema kama utapata zaidi kiroho ama utapoteza david together with the anointing of the lord yani daudi pamoja na upako wa bwana he had begun singing spiritually alianza kuzama kiroho so this thing he was doing was not good ana kitu hiki alikuwa akikifanya hakikuwa chema and for him to defend it na kwa ajili kuweza kukikinga and also continue living in zikla na aendelee kuishi pale zikla he became a liar akafanyika muongo he became a madara akafanyika mtu wa kuua and then he became like a crafty man to twachish akafanyika mtu wa uongo kwa achish see how david sang then in chapter 29 you can jump jump chapter 28 that is the witch in edo I, I told you that when I spoke about the spirit of definition. Now in chapter 29, basi katika mlango wa 29, there was a war that was going to happen between Israel and Philistines. Kulikuwa na vita vilivyokuwa vifanyike kati ya Israeli na Wafilistini. Which come do you think ideally by the will of God should David fight for? Wewe unawaza basi Daudi anapaswa kupigania kambi ipi? Yes, Kevin. Which come should David fight for? For Israel to fight Philistines the enemies of God. But this time round he said no. 
Lakini wakati huu Daudi akasema hapa. I'm going to I'm going to join the Philistines. Naungana na wa Philistine. We are going to fight Israel. Na tunaenda kupigana na Israeli. But because of this character of craftiness, I think he just wanted to get to the war front ndio awageuke. That that was his behavior, I think so. Na wazia hivyo tu alitaka kufikia pale mbele ndio awageuke. So he began to march. Basi akaanza kwenda. And it was that journey for many days. Ilikuwa ni safari ya siku mingi. Please follow me through. Are we getting anything? Then he began to go. Basi akaanza kwenda. Together with this man. Pamoja na watu wake. When they arrived in the battlefield. Walipofika katika uwanja wa vita. The lords of Philistine looked at David. Watu wa Philistine wakaangalia Daudi. And asked, wakamuuliza, "Who is this Jew?" Basi huyu Myahudi ni nani? Why has he come to join us? Bona amekuja kuungana nasi. And they rejected him. Nao wakamkataa. And that is one that David to fight. Na Achish alimtaka Daudi kupigana. He said this not David. Kasema je huyu si Daudi? Whom they sang in the dances. Yule waliyomuimba katika katika kucheza. So last new is thousands. Zauli amewaua amewaua elfu. And David ten of thousands. Na Daudi maelfu, makumi elfu. I'm reminded of a sermon that Mukanda preached to us. He said if you want women to sing about you they will sing because david david only killed goliath daudi aliua goliath tu but they said he has killed tens of thousands lakini wakasema kwamba ameua maelfu you remember that some and say it is a nature of women if you treat well they you treat them well they praise you sema ukiwatunza vyema basi wanakushifu so the laws of philistine said basi wale wakuu wa philistine wakasema we are not going to fight in the same camp with david sema tutapigana katika kambi moja na daudi hallelujah We are not going to fight in the same camp. Atuendi kupigana katika kambi moja. So the Bible says David and his men rose up early to depart in the morning and they returned to the land of Philistine and the Philistines went up to Jezreel. Hallelujah. Amen. This war was orchestrated by God. Vita hivi vilitandaliwa na Mungu. Because it was this war that was supposed to kill Saul. Maana vilikuwa ni vita hivi vilivyopasha kumuua Saul. So even if David had stayed in the case of Jerusalem, hata kama Daudi angelisalia kule Yerusalemu, God would have still killed Saul. Mungu bado angemuua Saul. Because that was a prophetic word in the streets of Israel. Maana ile ilikuwa neno la mnabii katika njia za Israel. Even witches knew that Saul will die the same day together with his sons. Hata wachawi walijua kwamba Saul atakufa siku moja na vijana wake. And before we go I teach you the principles of recovery. Na kabla tuendeleeni mafundisho kanuni za kurejesho. One thing that, that, that this is a very sad story in the Bible. Hii ni habari ya kuhuzunisha sana kwenye Biblia. Whenever I read it I really pity Jonathan. Wakati ambapo anaisoma anamuzunukia Jonathan. You, you know Jonathan? Ajua Jonathan? He was a man of discernment. Alikuwa ni mtu wa utambuzi. The Bible says there is a day David was speaking and after his speaking his spirit and the, the soul and the soul of uh, David and that of Jonathan were knit together. Basi Biblia inasema kwamba kuna siku moja Daudi alikuwa akizungumza na baada alipomaliza Biblia inasema kwamba moyo wake na Yonatani ukaambatana na they became very good friends wakawa marafiki I know that is a scripture that homosexuality is used to misinterpret the abominations Anajua basi hiyo ndilo andiko ambao mashoga wanatumia kuharibu yani they became maniko. very good friends wakafanyika marafiki wazuri And Jonathan kept on telling David Na Yonatani akashinda kumwambia Daudi I know you shall be the king of Israel Ninajua utakuwa mfalme wa Israeli But when you become king Lakini ukifanyika ufalme Please don't forget my family. Tafadhali usisahau familia yangu. How Jonathan decided to accompany a god for second king to war is a mystery. Kama yani ni ajabu vile ambavyo Yonatani aliamua kufuatana na mfalme ambaye Mungu alikuwa amemkataa katika vita ni jambo la kustajabisha. It tells you that Jonathan loved bread and butter. Inakwambia kwamba Yonatani alipenda mkate na siagi. He was not willing to suffer in the cave together with David. Hakutaka kuumia katika mapango na Daudi. What do you think David would have what do you think Jonathan would have become if he stuck with Saul? Yani, with uh, with uh, David. Unawazia Yonatani angelikuwa nani kama angelisalia na Daudi? Naone wewe. Kuna watu wakuuliza maswali. He would have been the vice president, right? Pengine angekuwa ni waziri wa raia, yani naibu wa raia to please his family. Lakini akaamua kupendeza familia yake. That's why I keep on telling you this family thing will draw you to hell faster than sin. Ndio maana nakwambia hii kitu ya family itakuvuta kuzimu haraka kuliko dhambi. Na mitindo ya kikwetu na vitu za kikwetu mpaka tuna kanisa ya mababa zetu. You know he chose to stay with Saul. Akaangua kuketi na Sauli. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he wanted to please his father. I think Jonathan thought he will go to war. His father will die. They had already been taught and then him he will now come back to David. Pengine aliwazia ya kwamba yani wataenda vitani baba yake afe na yeye atarudi mbio akimkimbilia Daudi. How many of you know that you can short change God? Ni wangapi wanajua uwezi kumbadilishia Mungu tena? Yes, tempo. you can short change God. If you never suffered in the cave with David, kama hukuumia ma, kwenye mapango na Daudi, you don't qualify to sit in the throne and eat bread with him. Basi haustahili kuketi kwenye kwenye meza yake na kula mkate pamoja. So 
Because Jonathan died a very useless death. Basi Jonathan yakafa kifo ambacho ni cha The same death like Abraham. Because he, what he needed was to sit down. Kila alichostahili ni kuketi chini. And calculate and see it's okay. It's all is my father but where is God? Where is God? Angeketi chini aone kwamba ndio Sauli ni baba yangu lakini Mungu yuko wapi? God is with David. Mungu yuko pamoja na David. So let me leave the palace. Wacha niachane na Let me leave the good bed. Wacha niache kitanda kizuri. Let me go to the cave. Wacha niende kwenye mahali. Alis I have seen where the anointing of God is the next time we will take over government. Angalau nimeona upako wa Mungu uko wapi na basi watachukua serikali. Tell your neighbor this year be a strategist too and a spiritual one. Mwambie jirani yako mwaka huu uwe mtu wa mipangilio na ya kiroho. Hallelujah. Amen. Be a strategist and a spiritual one. Kuwa mtu wa kwenye mwenye mipangilio na ya kiroho. So I want now to show you chapter 30 that, that's where we will meet and finish the service. Basi tuangalie mlango wa 30. Now David had gone to uh, to fight in a war that God had not sent him. Basi Daudi akaenda kupigana katika vita ambavyo Mungu alikuwa hajamtuma. Hallelujah. Amen. So we can easily say that David forsook, forsook the will of God. Basi tunaweza kwa rahisi kusema Daudi aliacha mapenzi ya Mungu. And the followed his heart. Na kafuata moyo wake. And that sometimes is what brings us losses. There are few things that brings us losses in life. Kuna vitu kadhaa vinatuletea hasara maishani. And they bring us deficits. Na zinatuletea upungufu. Number one we find it in John 10:10. Satan can steal from you. Shetani anaweza kuiba kutoka kwako. He is a thief. Yeye ni mwizi. But when Satan steals from you, it is very easy to recover because Jesus came to give you life. Lakini shetani akiiba kutoka kwako ni rahisi kupata maana Yesu alikuja kukupa uzima. What about when you steal from yourself? Basi itakuwaje wewe ukijiibia? What about when you miss yourself? Basi itakuwaje wewe ukijiharibu mwenyewe? Hallelujah. Amen. Say today in this service. Leo katika ibada hii. And the year begins. Mwaka unapoanza. I receive the mercy of the Lord. Napokea rehema za Bwana. To recover all. Kurejeshe kurejeshe the mighty name. Yesu. Ukienda vita ambavyo Mungu hajakutuma hasara ipo. So the Bible says and it came to pass when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day. It tells you The journey they took was six days. They went three days, they came three days. Or alternatively, they went 1.5, they came 1.5. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it's not clear how many days they went, but now after three days, they arrived in Ziklag. Amen. Amen. And that the Amalekites had invaded the south and the Ziklag and smitten a uh, smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they taken the women captives and therein they slew not either and a great uh, either great or small but carried them away and went on their way so david and his men came to the city and beyond it was burnt with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives then david and the people that were with him lifted up their voice wept until there was no more power to it let me just explain that before we go on when david came wakati daudi alirudi there was nothing in ziklag hapakuwa na chochote pale ziklag all his wives wake zake zote and all the wives of his men the 600 men na wake wa wale watu wake all the, the children watoto wote all the cattle ngombe wote all the houses nyumba zote if they were like they had gone if the houses were burnt nyumba zilichomwa there was nothing to touch on hakukuwa kitu cha kushika it is no certain that they stolen from david si shetani alikuwa amemuibia daudi bwana yesu asifiwe amen david left jerusalem daudi aliacha And he brought himself to war front with God. Akajileta kwenye vita kwa mstari wa mbele wa vita. Why do I know God orchestrated this loss? Bwana ninajua kwamba Mungu ndio aliandaa hasara hii. Because God is not a murderer. Maana Mungu si muuaji. He made the Amalekites not to kill anyone. Aliwafanya Amaleki wasiue mtu yote. But he gave them power. Lakini aliwapa nguvu. The ability to frustrate David. Na nguvu za kuweza kumumsa. Say that will not be my person in 2023. Sema hiyo haitakuwa sehemu yangu katika mwaka 2023. You know if it is certain that has frustrated you you can wake up by by fire by force you can even do the uh, neither to pick a mateke what about if it's god that has frustrated you je itakuwaje kama ni mungu basi aliyekuletea haya hallelujah amen but i thank god for david nashukuru mungu kwa ajili ya daudi men that know how to break before god will always find mercy watu wanaojua kuvunjika mbele za bwana kila wakati watapata rehema and i am telling you this this was one season that leadership failed na nakwambia kwamba hii ilikuwa ni majira ambayo uongozi ulianguka because what happened maana kilichofanyika the people were very frustrated watu walipokuwa wamegadabishwa all of them picked up their stones wote wakaokota mawe bwana yesu asifiwe amen to stone who david kupiga daudi sasa hebu tukuje hapa kidogo imagine uko kwa congregation mungu amekuacha 
Unamisimama kubiri alafu wa shirika watu wa meokota mawe. What would you do? All of them, they say we are going to stone David. What does it tell you? The protective cover of God that used to walk with David had already left him. Tell your neighbor, learn to stay within the parameters of the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Kutaka tuhubiria watu miatano sawa Elfu moja sawa wawili sawa Hallelujah Because that is where you find protection Mana hapo nipo unapata ulinzi Hallelujah So Wacha tu Tusafa tuangalie The The principles that you must follow. So now don't formulate your own notes now. Because you must get now the principles. I, I don't know how many people you have lost many things. Me, I did list. I, I have also lost things. And I don't want to talk about things that Satan has stolen from you. We want to talk about things that we have been careless with. Some of you would have finished school a long time. It's only that you are careless with education. Some of you were careless with the instruction of God. Some of us, let me put myself there, were also careless with the ministry. There are things you lose because of yourself. So one thing that David did when he found himself in this state understand this is the land of Philistines he lifted up his voice and wept until there was no more power to weep. Tell your neighbor repentance Hallelujah. Amen. That is the key number one. For recovery. For so if you want God to restore you. And to restore things that you have lost. Number one is not blame game, it's repentance. It is where you take full responsibility of your actions. David did not begin to say. Were it not for Saul, I would not have left Jerusalem. Were it not for Saul, I would not be in Ziklag. Were it not for the laws of Philistines, maybe we will not have lost this and that. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is point number one, repentance. Verse five. And the devil's two wives were taken captive. I know him and Jezreel. Ah, who had gone I don't even want to go there. Abigail was the wife of the late Nabal. And David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people were, uh, was grieved. Every man for his sons, for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. After repentance, encourage yourself in the Lord. At least you are not dead. At least you can go to Hebrews 4.16. And approach the throne of grace boldly. And they find grace and they find mercy. So after repentance, learn to find strength from God. Because most of the time after repentance, we lose every strength. You don't see David expecting brethren to come and encourage him. He encouraged himself in the Lord is God. So we can say David had a personal God. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 7. And David said to Abiata, the priest, I may son, I pray thee, bring me either the effort. And Abiata brought either to the effort to David. Hallelujah. Amen. And David inquired the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered and said, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Number two. Number three. The, the first one was repentance, right? The right one was encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. Amen. The third one is just go back to that God that you have missed and ask him. 
what is the way forward rudi tu kwa yule mungu ambaye umemkosea uulize basi ni njia gani go back to the god you, you see abiata was always with david abiata kila wakati alikuwa na daudi and when david was going to 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 zikla go to philistim wakati ambapo daudi alikuwa anaenda kwa philistim ama pale zikla he never asked for the effort hakuuliza ile na ivera but this time round lakini wakati huu i see a david that was willing to lose everything than to go without god ninaona daudi ambaye yuko tayari kupoteza vitu vyote kuliko kwenda At this state if God had said don't go. Kwa wakati huko kama Daudi kama Mungu angelisema usiende. Let the women go. Wacha wanawake waende. Let the property go. Wacha mali iende. David would have not dared to go. Daudi basi hangeenda. So number three, you take yourself back to God. Basi cha tatu ni jirejeshe kwa Mungu. Tell with me which way Lord. Muulize njia gani Bwana? In 2023. Katika mwaka 2023. This is the mess that I am in. Basi haya ndio hapa ndipo nilipo. Which is the way? Njia ni ipi? Which way do we go? Tunaenda Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to always know that you can be honest with God. Nataka ujue ya kwamba ya kwamba unaweza kukuwa wazi na Mungu. And, and that is one attribute of David that is very clear in the Bible. Na hiyo ni tabia moja ya Daudi ambayo iko wazi kabisa katika Biblia. There are times David will go to the Lord and tell him my soul is bent. Angeenda kwa Bwana amwambie Bwana nafsi yangu imeinama. Nafsi yangu imeinama. Amen. Amen. So this time round, kwa hivyo wakati huu, it's like David is telling God, kama Daudi anamwambia Mungu, it is me myself and I. Ni mimi mimi na mimi na sent myself to the land of philistine niliyejituma katika nchi ya philistine and right now the great david has become a civilian basi yule daudi mkuu amefanyika mtu wa kawaida even the honor that i had to leave these people has disappeared hata ile heshima niliyokuwa nayo kuongoza watu hawa imepotea which way lord jia ipi ya bwana if you say i pursue i will pursue kama utasema niwafuate nitawafuata if you say now that was your mistake start afresh i will start afresh kama utasema hiyo ilikuwa ni makosa yako anza upya nitaanza upya if, if, if you say now if my problem it will be my problem kama utasema ni shida yangu basi itakuwa ni shida yangu. But God is a good God. Lakini Mungu ni Mungu mzuri. He will always give you a solution. Kila wakati atakupa suluhu. Hallelujah. Amen. And David and quiet of the Lord shall I pursue. Daudi akauliza kutoka kwa Bwana, "Je, nifuatilie watu hawa?" The word pursue there is a commission. Neno kufuatilia ni ile kupewa a personal commitment. Ni kujitolea mwenyewe. He doesn't want to say I am experienced in war. Hataki kusema kwamba nina nina nina, uta, nina utambulizi mwingi katika vita. And understand the Amalekites have gone for three days. Amen. Na utambue kwamba wameleki wameenda siku tatu. Hale watu walikuwa na dange. So let's assume today if you start a journey here na unakimbizana na punda ama os. Three days where will you be? Siku tatu utakuwa wapi? Past Malaba, right? Yes. And there is no plane to take David to Kampala. Hakuna ndege ya kumpeleka pale. So if he must pursue. Kama ni lazima wafuatilie. So these people have already gone. Ah watu tayari wameenda. 72 hours. Masasa uh, 72. And he feels late. Anaona kama amechelewa. Let me talk to somebody. Wacha nizungumze na mtu. You are eight mates. My husband has said he is getting old. Of course he is. He is. This year he should be 41, right? I'm coming right behind you. Now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, uri kuzaeka pamoja kwa miko shida. So you, you tend to reason like God people together. Now listen. You the people maybe you went to school with. Pengine watu walioenda shuleni nao. They have already gone ahead 72 hours. Hali wameshafika pale mbele masaa 72. Then they have already bought houses. Wamenunua manyumba. They have a range of vehicles. Wana magari kadhaa. And every time you wake up to do something. Kila wakati ukiamka kufanya kitu. You feel like it was my mistake. Unahisi kwamba ilikuwa ni makosa yangu. I didn't if I had finished school like them. Nimaliza shule kama wao. I will be where with the young. Ningekuwa mahali walipo. They had done things right. Kama ningelifanya vitu sawa. So you feel like you are late. Unahisi kana kwamba umechelewa. But I want to tell you this year you can run with the speed of the Holy Spirit. Lakini nataka kuambia mwaka huu unaweza kukimbia na mbio za Roho Mtakatifu. Na uweze kupata vyote. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. So the three days was not a short journey. Basi zile siku tatu haikuwa ni safari fupi. But he needed an assurance and that's where I took the topic from the assurance of God. Pale ndipo alipopata kichwa kwamba hakikisho ya Bwana. In the last two very specific questions. Na ana maswali mawili ambayo ni special. Shall I pursue after this troop? Je, nifuatilie kikundi hiki? That is a question. Swali hili. And, and you see you can pursue them and they go and they kill you. Unaweza kuwafuatilia na waende wakuue. Because he wants to go back and say us the Lord. If I pursue, will I overtake them? Na nairudi tena pale na sema, "Eh Bwana, nikiwafuatilia, je, nitawafikia?" Hallelujah. Amen. Because that is the thing. If I pursue them, I need to overtake them. 
Yaani anasema kwamba nikiwafuatilia basi nafaa kuwapita ama kuwapata. And there are no helicopters. Na hakuna ndege. So what will God do in this situation? Basi Mungu atafanya nini katika hali hii? When you find yourself in this situation, wakati unajipata katika hali hii, always pray for God to make your enemy to make strategic mistakes. Basi yaomba kwamba Mungu afanye maadui wako wafanye makosa fulani. So that you may pursue easily. Ili ukaweze kuwafuatilia kwa haraka. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Kuna kitu tunapata takusaidia mwaka huu haleluya and he answered and said and, and he answered him pasu fatilie that is the ministry pasu huduma fatilie that is the, the i mean is a commission pasu ni kule kujitolea kwa binafsi hiyo ni personal responsibility pasu yani kujitolea kwa binafsi and because his god did not tell him you will overtake them he said you shall surely say surely kwa hakika and nilikwambia every time you read the bible and see this word be very careful about it wakati wote unasoma biblia ukiona neno hili kuwa mwangalifu sana nalo you shall surely overtake them kwa hakika utawapata and then god added a bonus to him because david did not ask him Napasipokukosha my finances my spiritual life i shall recover nitaipata jesus name kwa jina la yesu but you understand before this there are those principles i have told you lakini unaelewa kabla hili kuna zile kanuni ambazo ametuambia and david went and you, you know when david was uh, asking god wakati daudi alikuwa anamuuliza mungu alikuwa alone alikuwa peke yake so you don't expect the whole congregation of 600 to say yes yes we are going with you basi hautarajii kwamba ile yani wale watu wote wa 600 waseme tunaenda na wewe no 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 some of them say we will just remain somewhere where we see what is there we remain you go on your mission fail again and then when you come back we can kill you properly hallelujah so uh, he only went with 400 men alienda tu na watu 100 the bible says 200 men were so faint bibi nasema wengine 200 walikuwa wameisha kabisa wakazimia yani watu 200 walikuwa wameshashikwa na depression hallelujah Amen. so in this year katika mwaka huu. Don't let anyone kill your vision. Usiache mtu auwe maono yako. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes you want to start something and then somebody will tell you, hiyo ah, biashara ya hiyo haiendagi, hiyo inakufaga tu hiyo. Usianze hiyo. Don't let anyone kill their vision. Usiache mtu akauwa maono yako. If they just die. Kama yao imekufa. Maybe they went there without God. You as will live in Jesus. Wengine walienda pale pasipo Mungu yako itaishi kwa jina la Yesu. Amen. But the, the Bible says but David pursued. Lakini Biblia inasema kwamba Daudi aliwafuatilia. I'm reading verse 10 of uh, 1 Samuel 30. He and the 400 men. For 200 men were very faint and they remained, they could not go over the brook. And they found an Egyptian in the field and they brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water and they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins and when he had eaten his spirit came again to him for he had eaten no bread or drunk any water for three days and three nights and David said unto him to whom belongest thou and when whence art thou and he said I am a young man of Egypt a servant to the Amalekites my master left me because three days ago uh, three days ago I fell sick we made an invasion upon the south of the Cherethites and upon the coast which belonged to Judah and upon the south of Caleb and we burned Ziglag with fire hallelujah amen bwana yesu asifiwe amen Now God made the Amalekites to do very strategic mistakes. Basi Mungu alisababisha waameleki kufanya makosa ya mpangilio. Amalekites were skilled in war. Hao wameleki walikuwa watu ambao wako wa There is no way you leave a captive behind. Au wachi mtumwa nyuma. Hallelujah. Amen. If the slave dies you carry them as a dead body. Kama yule mtu anakufa unambeba kama maiti. Say but God. Lakini <laughs> Mungu. Hallelujah. Amen. Ndio uzuri wa kupiganiwa na Mungu but God. Lakini <laughs> Mungu. He made them to do a mistake. Aliwasababisha kufanya makosa. 
And this man fell sick by the hand of God. And the God decided you will not die. You will only be faint. And along the way, David's men found him. And they began to revive him. They gave him water. They gave him bread. Until he revived. And without any question, he began to give them information. May also God give you informants that will tell you about the enemies of God in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, you began to say, I'm in an Egyptian, I am a slave. We did this, we burnt here, we burnt. Nobody was uh, taking him for an interview. Hallelujah. Amen. He was only asked to whom do you belong. He would have said, I am an Egyptian and a slave. Bwana Yesu akakusaidie sana. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Lord is able. Mungu anaweza akafanya maadui wake waropokwe sana. Kwa hata huko unajua wewe unapangiwa kuwekewa sumu kwa chakula lakini mtu anaropokwa mpaka zaidi kwa sababu Roho Mtakatifu hiyo ndio kazi yake kulinda watu wake. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Eh na jamii ikikutana vile wanasema mtu mmoja tu anatokea kule anaropokwa tu anakwambia tulikuwa Christmas tukafanya hivi tukafanya hivi ni kuropokwa tu na mtu anaropokwa under the influence of the holy spirit Amen. hallelujah Amen. so this is the man that took david <laughs> to the camp of the amalekites and it was by design you can imagine how many days would have david uh, wasted looking for the camp of the amalekites Let's say he would have looked for it for one month. He would have gone and found that the Amalekites decided to sell his sons and daughters as slaves to another country. He may have found the two wives that were gone were already remarried. But God is the strategist. He was God, as long as David had repented. As long as David had strengthened himself in the Lord as long as David had inquired to know which way Lord he was going to support him in his quest may the Lord support your quest this year if it is within the will of God in Jesus mighty name Amen. hallelujah and God gave David strength and he beat all the men in the Amalekites camp only 400 men escaped and it's because they rode on camels and they fled. Every other thing. David finished them. And the Bible says in verse 18. And the David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. Say this year I shall recover all. Including what Satan has carried away. To now by including what I lost because of my own mistakes. In the name of Jesus. And there was nothing lacking to uh, lacking to them, neither small or great. God knows how to package your restoration. When you sit down to count and do your mathematics as the year will end in 2023, there will be nothing that will be missing. Including time. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And then it finishes by saying, let me read verse 19. And there was nothing lacking to them Neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken, uh, they had taken to them. David recovered all. Say all. Oh. I like saying it all minus nothing. Hallelujah. And David took all the flocks and all the hearts which they drove before those other cattle and said, this is David's spoil. And you can read all uh, up to uh, verse 31. And you will see the spoil was too much until he began to send uh, sacrifices to the leaders of Judah. Amen. 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 So that you don't live a life of me, my children, my wife, me, my children, my wife. You can also be a blessing to the nation. You can be a blessing to the nation. Amen. Amen. If you build them a school, you have become a blessing to the nation. Amen. 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 
So we are flying with faith. Amen. Amen. And God will take you there in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So in the process of this recovery, I want you to always consider those principles. It's the way that God say, you, you go before God and say, which way, Lord? And he tells you north. If you don't want to follow north, there would have been no there was no need for you to go to God and ask for a biata. So in this year, should you find yourself in a situation that you may feel like you messed up your life, you, you have messed your ministry, you have messed your work, you have messed your business, you have messed your parents, those are the principles. Tell your neighbor, repent us. Repentance. Toba. Repentance. Toba. When we encourage yourself in the Lord, let him seek the will of God and be willing to pursue it. And you shall overtake it. Hallelujah. To the glory. And the honor of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is another loss you can suffer. That is loss is where Satan steals from you. And that one when you go through prayer. It will surely recover in Jesus mighty name. As we finish. I want to pray that the Lord will restore your original blueprint of life in Jesus name. I'm talking about I pray for myself that every original plan God gave me for ministry it shall be restored in the name of Jesus. And the way I have messed myself up as repentance goes up as I encourage myself in the Lord as I follow the direction of God I shall recover all in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. The original divine plan of God those of you who have lost the instruction of God you know there are people I meet and they can give you a dream one woman one time told me before I came to Rio God appeared to me in his three forms God of Abraham God the Father the Son, the Holy Spirit they said to me stay in your home your pastor will be a young woman with two children. And he stayed until they found me. But after a few months, you lose that instruction. I don't know very far. There is no water to buy. There is no anointing oil. <laughs> My cripples have not worked. One day they will walk massively. Amen. 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 You lose the instruction of God <laughs> along the way. <laughs> I, I'm looking at Ruby and I am laughing. <laughs> this one also, also almost lost his, lost his instruction. You know when Ruby came, she came to church. She looked around. She found every woman tie her head. She went home saying, I'll never go back to that church again. I am not a old woman. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and then she tells me she went to prayer. And then she saw us again. We were more cleaner than her and looking good than her. And I can't remember the dream like uh, word by word. And then she decided, uh, I'll go again and try. She didn't know the husband was here. <laughs> and sometimes she'll come here and tell me, I don't want to pray for marriage anymore. I prayed for too long. It is you that will pray for it and you come and tell me. And I will wonder. So this girl still has a mind of, if I tire, I will not get married. Almost losing the instruction of God. Am I right? But today you are okay. May God restore everybody that has lost the instruction of God in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That every good thing that God has destined for you, you shall possess it. Amen. Hallelujah. We are looking at a total restoration so that you may advance this vision in Jesus' mighty name. And don't worry if you feel like you have taken too long to achieve a restoration. The God we serve can package your miracle that was supposed to take 20 years. He can package it in one day. In Jesus mighty name. Let us read Isaiah 61.7 Isaiah 61.7 
and learn that formula. It will help you in life every time. There are people you go for an interview and you are taught very well. The interview will begin at 8. You have arrived at 8. It's you that have messed yourself. Go back to that formula again. Repent. You have already lost the job. Repent. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Go back to the Lord and say, I want the effort. I want direction. And before you make decisions, learn that in your life. To hear the Lord and to follow him. After that, we don't see David making a mistake again of going without hearing the Lord. Yes, Isaiah 61, Anthony. The word says, mm -hmm. instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Amen. 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 Uh -huh. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Amen. Amen. Therefore, in their land they shall possess double. Amen. Amen. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Amen. Amen. Where you have suffered shame, may the Lord give you double of honor. In Jesus' mighty name. You have me like that. Where I have suffered shame, may the Lord give me double honor. In the name of Jesus. And instead of mourning, may the Lord give you a garment of praise. In the name of Jesus. I want us to make a confession. Let us stand up with your Bibles. We finish the service. I told you I'll not be here long. I want us all of us to go to Deuteronomy 33. The confession I'm making, then we pray. Deuteronomy, I've actually been studying the book of Deuteronomy. I didn't even know it will be part of uh, the assignment that was given this year, but I've been studying it. So we're going to Deuteronomy, and we are going to chapter 30, and we are going to verse 3. Deuteronomy, and teach yourself how to confess the word of God. It is active in the life in Jesus' mighty name. Deuteronomy 33. 1, 2, 3. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. And they will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God had scattered the hallelujah. I want us to go before the Lord according to the sermon today. It was a short one, but I want you to go to before the Lord. Vile tu meyelo, mukanda please come to the keyboard and pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth.